Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to a brand new mod spotlight. Today taking a look at Refined Storage. Refined Storage is a mod that is very similar in theme and concept to Applied Energistics. So those of you who've played with Applied Energistics should find yourself right at home. However, Refined Storage does things a little differently. Uh, it doesn't have a channel system and it does have native support for fluids as well as a few other things that are different throughout the mod. So you'll definitely recognize differences uh, to Applied Energistics, but you should also recognize a lot of similarities. Uh, we're going to cover all the features of Refined Storage and let you guys know how to do all the cool stuff that Refined Storage can do. Those of you who are not familiar with Applied Energistics, do not worry. This spotlight will be tailored towards people who don't understand the concepts of Applied Energistics and item storage and a system like that, so you should have no problem following along as well. All right, guys, let's get started. So Refined Storage is a mod that's all about item storage, and it can also handle liquid storage. It's a way to store your items in a nice and compact way and have access to those items throughout your world uh, using a cabling system. There's also some remote storage and remote access to your items as well, and automatic crafting, and a lot of automation capabilities. So let's get started taking a look. One of the first things you're going to want to know how to make is quartz enriched iron. It's pretty simple. Three iron and a piece of quartz gets you four quartz enriched iron. Cool. One of the other things you're going to want to know how to make is machine casing. Uh, that is just eight quartz enriched iron. From there, the machine casing is used to make a lot of things. The first thing you'll want to make probably is a controller. Now, a controller is going to need access to power by way of any kind of RF storage or Tesla. Or there's several other ways to generate power. Um, you guys are familiar with power systems, so we're not going to get too deep into that. So once you've uh, placed your controller block, maybe even adjacent to some kind of storage, you'll see that it automatically converts your energy into RS, which is uh, refined storage's power system. It's basically one RF is one RS. So there's really no math you have to do for that. The next thing you want to do is make yourself a solderer. The solderer is what's going to uh, give you access to a bunch of different stuff throughout the mod. Place that next to your controller for now, and uh, you should be able to check out all the different recipes that are available. For example, um, you can get yourself printed processors, and these can eventually be used to make improved processors. Basically, as you go throughout the mod and you're looking to craft things, you're going to want to find this. So an example would be this importer here. You're going to need an improved processor that's made in the solderer. The printed silicon is made in the solderer with silicon, which you can get from smelting nether quartz. Cool. Those of you using other mods that have silicon in them, it should be or dictionary, so you should have no problem getting that. And it's pretty easy. As you could probably imagine, all you do is toss an item there, and it's going to go ahead and process, and you'll get your item out. Neat. Probably the very next item that you're going to want to get yourself is a disk drive, which is going to require an advanced processor, machine casing, and oak chest. The advanced processor, by the way, requiring a diamond. Okay, The disk drive can go right next to the controller if you wish. Neat. So the disk drive is what's going to store disks, and disks are items that can hold your other items. It's pretty straightforward, and we'll take a look here in a moment how this works. You'll notice there's a bunch of options over on the left-hand side. Don't worry about them for now. We'll be talking about them shortly. Next up, you'll want to get storage disks. There's several tiers of them. The lowest tier is the 1K storage disk, which you can see the crafting recipe for here. Uh, you're going to need 1K storage parts. Higher tiers include 4, 16, and 64K storage. There's also a creative one that doesn't have a recipe. The 64K storage, by the way, requires a lot of crafting components, so I recommend not jumping into that until you have a better understanding of how to do things. It's probably best to automate that crafting because there's a lot of steps to get a 64K storage drive. Once you've made your storage drive, simply throw it into the disk drive. And you'll notice now that on the left hand side here, it's saying that you're storing a possible, uh, a, a total of zero out of a possible 1,000 items. So a 1K storage drive can store 1,000 items. Those who are familiar with Applied Energistics might remember that Applied Energistics limited different types. So you could have 63 item types and a total of 1,000 items. Refined Storage doesn't do this. It's just a flat 1,000 items. You can store 1,000 pieces of coal or 1,000 pieces of cobble or 1,000 yetta wrenches, which don't stack. Cool. From there, we're going to craft ourselves a grid. Now, there's several types of grids, but the most basic one is what you're going to want to access first. And just place that anywhere on the network, either on top of the disk drive or on top of the controller. Boom. Now you have access to interact with the drives in here, and you can store items by placing them inside the grid. 
Cool, we just placed 62 stake inside the grid. If we look over here in the disk drive, we'll notice that we've used 62 out of the possible 1,000 items. It's telling us we're about 6% full, and if we look at the storage disk, it holds those 62 items. So all your items that are inside the grid, for example, we could throw a few other things in there, maybe not my angel ring, and maybe not my mana tablet, and we'll see now we have 64 items in there, right? Throw half a stack of cobble, all of a sudden we have 96. Throw a few more pieces of cobble, and now we have 100. Cool. Now if I take this storage disk out of the disk drive, all the items exist on the disk. Okay. Notice now there's zero out of zero items and the grid is empty. All those items live here. So if you lose your disk, you lose your items. Keep that in mind. Go ahead and toss your disk back into the disk drive and you're good to go. Nice. The grid has a bunch of cool features. So first off, we can look for items. So for example, if I was looking for cobblestone, I could start searching for it up here. Once you have a large number of items in your storage network, this is going to be invaluable. If you look for redstone, you'll notice we don't have any, but of course we could easily get some. Neat. And now we can search for redstone and we'll find it. We can pull it out by shift clicking to get a whole stack, uh, middle click to get an individual one, middle right click to get half a stack. Neat. There's other things we can do. Um, I'm not gonna show you all the buttons here on the left right now, but I'm gonna show you some of them. We're gonna get into others later on in the spotlight. Um, you can change your search box mode. By default, it's just gonna search within the system. However, if you want, you can set it to auto-selected, which means as soon as you open it, the search box is automatically selected and you can't deselect it by mistake. Cool. Right-clicking, by the way, automatically clears the search box. Click it again and it's JEI synchronized, which means that when you search for redstone up here, it's also going to search JEI for redstone. And we can do the same for any other items that we have. Neat. If we want to look up a furnace, we could easily do so. This is going to be useful in a moment. You can also do JEI synchronized auto selected, which is similar to the other auto select. My personal preference, JEI synchronized without auto select. A couple other options that you can do here, you can sort by different things. Right now we're sorted by quantity. If we switch it, we can sort it by name so that we have it in order of name. Cool. And right now it's in descending, which means it's going backwards. If we switch it to ascending, we'll see that charging crystal comes first, then cobblestone, redstone, solder, or stake. It's in alphabetical order, ascending versus descending. Neat. Uh, if we switch it back to quantity, you'll see that it'll put quantity in ascending or descending. So in this way, we see the items that we have the most of first or the items that we have the least of first. Awesome. Another option here is redstone mode. Pretty much every block in refined storage has a redstone mode, and you can set it to only work with or without a redstone signal or to ignore it. This applies to the disk drive and the controller and pretty much almost any block that's part of refined storage. This allows for some serious automation, which we'll get into in a little bit. The searching feature also supports the at symbol, and you can search for example IC to search for industrial craft items pretty cool. Um, we can also search for at refined and you'll find all refined storage items. Awesome. So if you're looking for a specific mod, just like you can in JEI, you can search for it like that and you'll track it down. Finally, there's the grid filter, which is a pretty nifty little device. Uh, right click on here and you can specify certain items that can be available. So for example, cobblestone and whether or not to track damage or NBT values. Uh, once you've done that, you can place your grid filter in the grid and it'll automatically filter the grid to match only those items. Neat. Um, now you'll no longer have access, even if you search for it, to see those other items. They still exist in your network, they're just hidden, so that the grid is filtered to only show you certain things. This would be nice if you have like a remote area that's dedicated to, let's say, some kind of magical mod like Batania, and you only ever wanted to access Batania items from out there. Pretty cool. Now, as you start to fill up your disk drive, you're probably going to find that you're running out of space. So it's easy. You just make another 1K storage drive. Now your total capacity is 2K. This thing can hold up to eight disks in total. So you can hold up to 8,000 items if you use 1K storage. If you get 4K storage, obviously now you have four more thousand item storage and you can get all the way up to 64K storage, which can hold a ton of stuff. So now we have a total of 70,000 items that we can hold in our disk drive, which may sound like a lot, but when you're playing modded Minecraft, it's really not. Very quickly, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and upgrade this grid to a crafting grid, which is simply a grid, a crafting table, an advanced processor, and a solderer. See you later, grid. We're going crafting grid time. The crafting grid is great because it's a grid with a crafting table in it. 
Awesome. Um, many of the features you would expect exist. So you can search for a furnace, for example, and shift click, and it'll automatically populate the crafting window with that item. And you can left click to pull the item out, and you'll notice that it uses the items inside the entire network first before clearing the items that are on the grid. So if we keep pulling out furnaces, it'll keep pulling out the cobblestone from here. And if we pull out our last furnace, it'll pull out the last bit of cobblestone and leave what little we have remaining. This is a super awesome way to craft. Anybody who's not played with this before would do well to learn it because it is amazing how quickly you can craft the items you need. You have access to all your items, so just shift click from JEI and it'll work. Similar options exist here, by the way, JEI synchronize, sorting quantity, sorting direction, and redstone mode. We haven't covered this middle button, which is display. We'll talk about that in a little bit. You're probably not going to always want your blocks touching each other. So in order to upgrade your network, you're gonna to wanna to get some cables. They're not hard to make. Go ahead and place your cables on the ground and it allows your network to talk to uh, remote blocks, basically like you might expect. So place these guys down here and you'll notice that this cable transmits both the energy required to power the disk drive as well as the network connectivity to allow the disk drive to talk to the controller, to talk to the grid. Neat. Finally, each item that you place on the grid is going to require a certain amount of power, and you'll notice it here in your window. So if you mouse over the total energy on the left, you'll see that you're using 8 RS per tick, which isn't a lot for what we've got so far, but this will rapidly grow. Uh, the crafting grid is using 4, the disk drive is using 4, and your cables are using 0. You can see the total number of items uh, connected to the grid and uh, a bunch of other cool stuff. It should be noted, by the way, that if you don't want to use a disk drive, for example, early on, it might be expensive to make, you can get yourself a 1K, 4K, 16K, or 64K storage block. These are blocks that pretty much work like individual disk drives, where if you place items into the network, they will actually be stored inside the storage block. Cool. Note that if you break and pick up the storage block, it retains the items that are inside. So right now, those 16 pieces of cobble are not in there. However, if we place our storage block back down, the 16 cobble remain. Great. I've now completely cleared out the network because I want to demonstrate some of the features of the storage block, the disk drive, and a couple other of the blocks that we're going to see here. You see a lot of options on the left-hand side that toggle a lot of configs for this. Let's go over them. First off, redstone mode. You can turn off this thing with a redstone storage mode, which is pretty cool. So if I want to turn this off temporarily, apply a redstone signal or turn one off, whatever you want. In this mode, it's set to ignore, so it'll be on all the time, which is probably what you're gonna want most of the time. The next option is whitelist mode. You can whitelist specific items, which is cool. So I'm gonna say whitelist cobblestone. That means cobblestone's the only thing that's gonna be allowed in here. And if we don't have any more storage in the network, watch what happens. I can throw cobblestone in, but I can't put any other items into the network. Cobblestone's the only thing allowed in there. Nice, right? We can interact with cobblestone, take it in and out, but nothing else is allowed. Cool. Now I'm gonna pop a storage disk in here. What if I wanna make it so cobblestone goes into this one all the time and this guy gets anything else? What we can do is use the priority system. Basically, the higher the number of the priority, uh, the higher precedence it gets, right? You can also use a negative number if you wish. So in this case, we've set this guy to priority two, which means it's a higher number than the disk drive, which I've set to priority one. Cool. So your priority two, your priority one, items should try to go here first before they go over here. Neat. So let's give it a try. If I throw cobblestone in, we should see it going into the storage block. Awesome. And if I throw copper ore in there, it should not go into the storage block. It went into the storage drive. Sweet. The same for seeds. Now we should have two items in there. Great. I like it. Keep that in mind. Now, if we made this, for example, priority zero, and we made this one priority one, our cobblestone should wind up going into the disk drive first because it's the um, higher priority, one over zero. Got it? Cool. Let's switch this guy back to priority two. So now items are gonna try and go in here. Other filter options are comparing damage and MBT. Those of you familiar with modded Minecraft will know that damage is pretty much the damage on an item. So it's the metadata. Um, things that are, you know, similar metadata are, example, wool. Wool has the same item ID, but different metadata is assigned to it. Okay. Or the damage of a sword, for example. NBT is uh, like enchantments are using NBT and lots of other mods use NBT. So you'll probably get the hang of this if you're not familiar with modded Minecraft. The other thing you can do is compare the or dictionary. So if we say, yeah, go ahead and compare the ore dictionary, what this means is if we put one type of copper ore in there, for example, from Railcraft, all types of copper ore should find their way into this item. Cool, five of them got in there. 
and zero over here. Sweet. So we didn't have to specify all the different types of copper ore. If I tell it not to use the ore dictionary, when I place copper ores in there, only the one copper ore from Railcraft will find its way into the storage block, whereas the other four found their way into the disk drive. Neat, right? Totally awesome. You can super duper clarify which items are allowed in there. The next icon looks like a trash can. Void excess items. Dude. So if you wanted to, you could say, hey, put all the cobblestone in here and any other cobblestone we get, just void it. So without this item on, let's get a whole bunch of cobblestone. Watch what happens as I start putting cobblestone into our system here. This thing can only hold up to 1,000, right? So we're at 933. We're going to throw another stack in and another stack. What happened is you hit your 1,000, and then the remaining 61 went into here. Dude, that's not what I want at all. 995, 61, not cool. So let's clear that out. So instead, let's go ahead and say, with these both empty, go ahead and void excess items. That's cool. I don't care. Toss a whole bunch of cobblestone in there. And watch what happens after we pass 1,000. You've got 1,000 in here and you're full. You've got zero. And any remaining cobblestone that goes in there is going to immediately be voided. How great is that? And finally, you've got access type, insert and extract. You can specify whether items are allowed to go in here or be pulled out and vice versa. So in this configuration, insert and extract, items are allowed to go both in and out. However, if we set it to insert only, what that means is we can put items in, but we can't get them out. And extract only is the opposite. Cool. So if I were to extract this guy, notice that we're at 936 now. And if I tried to put cobblestone in the system, it wouldn't go in here. It would go in here because we're not allowing items to be inserted anymore. And the reverse for insert only. Cool. Next up, let's talk about fluid storage. So you've got several options for fluid storage in much the same way that you have item storage. You've got the 64K fluid storage block, 128, 256, and 512. This tells you how much liquid it can store in millibuckets. In other words, you can store 64 buckets 128 buckets, 256 buckets, or 512. You also have similar disk drives, so 64, 128, 256, and 512 disks that can go ahead and be stuck right in here. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a 64 storage drive for fluids. Neat. Now fluids can be stored in there. How do we do that? Well, one of the ways we can do it is with a fluid grid. Cool. Pop that guy down, and we can interact with the fluids in the system. To get liquids in and out of the fluid grid, just shift click. Boom. The fluid stored. We now have one bucket of water stored in our fluid system. Neat! 1,000 out of 64 millibuckets. That is cool. I totally dig that. Um, you can go ahead and add other fluids if you want. So you can throw lava in there, and you can throw quicksand apparently as a liquid that maybe we can't throw in there. Honey! Maybe not. Let's try from a different mod. Molten Cobalt. That works. Neat. So you can see that you can easily get uh, liquids in there. Now to get them out, just shift click. It'll first look for a bucket from your inventory. If it doesn't find one, it'll look for a bucket within the refined storage system itself. Sweet. It just used the buckets. That is awesome. The same rules of the grid apply. You can search and you can do the JEI synchronize thing. You can sort and all kinds of other good stuff. And the same rules apply over here for the disk drive that we saw earlier. Um, so you can see a couple of different options here that weren't available on the item one. Specifically this, type items. You can specify whether items or fluids can be stored in here. Um, that's a pretty neat feature. And uh, for the whitelisting, right? And then you can also um, do mode. So for example, if we put fluids and we put water bucket in here, when we shift clicked, you'd see that there's a water fluid there. If it was an item mode, it would be buckets of water. All the other options that we saw are pretty much the exact same thing. The next block I want to show you is pretty straightforward and it's pretty interesting. It's called the relay. Basically, it's a redstone controllable cable. Nice. So you can see here, only work without redstone or ignore redstone or only work with redstone. What this means is any cables beyond the relay, so cable goes into the relay, any cables on the other side are going to be disabled. So right now, we probably can't see any of the fluids in our fluid grid. Once we apply a redstone signal here to turn it on, it activates everything on the other side and we can see the fluids again. Neat. Of course, you could do this specifically with the uh, redstone mode on the disk drive itself, but 
if you had multiple blocks on this side of the cable that had like a whole big system and you want to turn them all on and off at once, pretty cool. Next up, let's talk about interacting with other inventories. There's a lot of different ways you can handle this. Let's demonstrate with a chest. However, there's support for lots of other storage mods like storage drawers and several others. So lots of different mods have uh, interactions here, but basically anytime you would wanna interact with an inventory, you can do so, do so with the following blocks. Let's take a look. So the first one that I'll demonstrate for you with the chest over here is the exporter. The exporter will export items from your inventory into any kind of storage block, be it a chest or whatever you want. Cool. To configure this, all you have to do is open up the UI and Something very, very similar to what you should be familiar with should be on your screen right now. Redstone mode, items or fluids, compare damage, yes or no, MBT, yes or no, and compare or dictionary, yes or no. This will export items. So for example, if I tell it to export cobblestone, it'll start dumping all the cobblestone out of the system into the chest. You can tell it to respond to a redstone signal as well if you want. Neat. We'll tell it to ignore for now. You can also speed this up with some upgrades from refined storage. Some of these upgrades are available for this one, and there's other upgrades that are used in other blocks. Speed upgrades and stack upgrades would be most useful right now. So a speed upgrade will increase the speed at which the exporter exports items. Notice with a few of these speed upgrades in here, we can really see the difference. Stack upgrades, on the other hand, will go ahead and upgrade uh, and export items one stack at a time. Cool. This will keep running until either the chest fills up or you run out of items in your system. At this point, it would be really nice to talk about the importer, which is the opposite of the exporter. Basically, it imports item into the system. So it pulls items out of the chest and throws it into your refined storage system. And the same rules apply for throwing stack upgrades in there and speed upgrades. Cool. Do note this will accept any and all items, unless of course you throw a filter on it. So it should be obvious that you need to put a filter on the exporter, but you don't need to put a filter on the importer. The next block to demonstrate here is the external storage block. What this does is it makes the chest or any other block in the world, their inventory becomes part of the grid as if it were part of a disk drive. What this means, for example, notice there are no levers in my system. I can place levers in the system by putting them in the chest. Now I have access to those levers. Neat. And I can take those levers out. And it pulled them out of the chest. So the chest is now an extension of the refined storage system. Pretty cool. Options on the external storage are very similar to the ones on the disk drive and the 1K storage block. You can configure things like items or fluids, whitelist or blacklist, MBT, metadata, compare or dictionary, and insert or extract mode. You can also set the priority. So if we made this priority five, notice that this can store 1.7K items. Because this is the highest priority and we haven't filtered it, this means that any new items that go into the network like cables are gonna automatically land in the chest. And when I extract items from the network, they can come out of the chest. We can also configure this thing for insert and extract only mode. So for example, if I put it in insert only mode and we put cables in there, notice the cables disappeared. Where'd they go? They went into the chest, but they're not listed in the network because extract mode is disabled. We can't extract those cables from that chest. Pretty neat, it's like they're hidden. If we set to extract only, then we can take the cables out, but when we go ahead and put them back in, instead of going into the chest, they'll go to the next applicable block, which is probably the disk drive. Neat. And of course, we can whitelist and blacklist with the external storage options on the top here and specify what's allowed to go into the external storage. This is really useful because it also inter interacts with storage drawers and the drawer controller. So those of you who are familiar with storage drawers, you can just stick this thing on a drawer controller and it can directly interact with it. And uh, you can see all the items that are in your storage drawer network. Super cool. It should be noted that the exact same blocks are used for fluid tanks or other kinds of fluids. So we can set an exporter in here and we can get ourselves a bucket of water and we can set this to item type fluid and set water. And what it should do is export water from our grid into the fluid tank. Neat. We can do the same thing with the importer. So we'll specify to import water. 
And again, the importer does not need a filter, so it'll automatically suck up the items. As long as we set it into fluid mode, and it'll suck up the fluids. Nice. So all the fluids got sucked out of the tank into the grid. Cool. And finally, of course, we can also do the external storage option if we want to store all our fluids in this tank by default. So for example, if we didn't have a fluid storage option here, we could do external storage on the fluid tank. Then when we grabbed ourselves a bucket of water and dropped it in here, the water would be available in the network because it's inside the tank. And when we tried to extract that water, it would pull it out of the tank. Awesome. All the options, by the way, of course, with whitelisting and import export or dictionary, yada, 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 all exist. Super cool. The final two blocks I'd like to show you before we wrap up part one of the mod spotlight are the constructor and destructor. Cool. Let's go ahead and place them in the world. So the constructor is pretty neat. What you can do is specify an item and it'll automatically place it in the world for you. So for example, cobblestone, boom, the constructor places it. When I break it, it's going to automatically place it again. Those items, of course, are coming out of here. 931 cobble becomes 930 cobble. Neat. You can specify all the same stuff. You can also do this with liquids, by the way. So if you have liquids stored in your system, you can use the constructor to go ahead and place liquids in the world. Let's demonstrate. First, we'll remove the cobblestone from here. Next, we'll make sure that we've got some water in the system and a fluid drive to hold it. Then we'll configure this guy to be fluid mode and set water as the export. Nice. Notice that it used one of the buckets of water. That's awesome. When I pick up that bucket of water, it's gonna go ahead and do that again. Awesome. I've just configured this to drop cobblestone there. Let's go ahead and show one more feature of this block, which is if you set it to drop blocks instead of placing, instead of placing items, it'll drop the blocks in the world. That's pretty neat. And of course, the destructor is the exact same thing in reverse. It's going to break any blocks in front of it and suck them into the network. So you'll notice the same thing here, 916 cobble, break it, it goes in, 917. And of course, we can set the same option for fluids and it'll absorb fluids. If we wanted to really quickly fill up our water in our system, Simply go ahead and make yourselves one of these. Ta-da! And we're getting lots and lots of water. And as you might ex expect, uh, you've got the same options for fluids or whitelisting and all that good stuff. Um, pretty cool. Pick up items instead of breaking. Neat. So this can be set to, uh, with items, you can just drop items on it, and they'll drop into the network instead of breaking the blocks in front of it. Pretty cool. You can do the same with speed upgrades as well over here. And with that, guys, I think we're going to wrap up part one of the Mod Spotlight on refined storage. There's quite a bit more to cover. Uh, we haven't covered the wireless system yet. We haven't covered networks. We haven't covered uh, detectors. We haven't covered wireless transmitters. We haven't covered auto crafting or patterns. We haven't covered wireless grids. There's a lot to take a look at still. Um, so let's come back for part two where we'll cover a lot of this stuff. For now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and this mod, and we'll see you next time. All right, guys, take it easy.